The Gardener Olive Pink Olive Muriel Pink 1884 to 1975 Always and Forever a Tasmanian Artist, Aboriginal rights activist, anthropologist and gardener Olive was born on March 17, 1884 Eldest child of Eveline and Robert Pink they lived in the home where her father was born at 44 Patrick Street, North Hobart, with grandmother Sarah Pink until 1911 when Sarah died. Olive's brother and only living sibling, Eldon, was born in 1888, following the birth and tragically death of three babies in their infancy. Olive's grandfather, George Pink, a former convict, had taken his own life in 1869 when he cast himself into the Derwent River at Newtown Bay and drowned. Robert was only 13. It would appear that history repeats and Olive's father took his own life on May 4, 1907, aged 50. By 1911, Olive and her mother were struggling financially and decided to make the move to her brother Eldon's farming property in Van Dee in Perth. Olive was educated at Miss Ayton's school in Brisbane Street, Hobart, followed by the girls' school where she met Miss Sarah Walker, the headmistress. She was strongly influenced by her Quaker philosophy for her entire life and kept in touch with her. Olive's early influences in art were most probably her grandmother and her father's younger sister, Aunt Frances Pink a talented artist who lived nearby at number 38 Patrick Street, where she displayed her artwork. Her grandmother Sarah gave her an expensive artist's paint box made by J. Newmans of London. Sarah also nurtured her interest in plants and gardens. Two books that survived Olive's long and interesting life were A Handbook of the Plants of Tasmania by W. W. Spicer and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. She studied art at Hobart Technical School with the sculptor Benjamin Shepherd, formerly of the Royal Academy of Arts in London. It was here Olive met her first sweetheart, Harold Southern. Harold was extremely talented as an artist, an outstanding student who qualified for the Assistant Art Master's Certificate in 1905 and went on to win gold and silver medals for his artistic work. Olive exhibited in the annual exhibition of the Tasmanian Art Society and began giving private lessons. She then joined the Hobart Technical School as a teacher in 1911. When she couldn't make ends meet for her, her and her mother, they moved to Perth, sailing on the Morea to join Eldon, and there she gave private art lessons. She had left Hobart with excellent references from the Hobart Technical School principal, Lucien Deschenaux. She put up a gold-lettered sign, Miss O.M. Pink, studio, on her door in St George's Terrace. Olive reconnected with her close friend Harold Southern, who had moved to Perth to work as an analytical chemist. In 1914, Harold enlisted. It is unclear if their engagement had been made official, but they were very close and Olive greatly admired him. Tragically, Harold died at Gallipoli, aged 25, on the 2nd of May, 1915. His younger brother Arthur was killed the same day. Olive was devastated and, she, and the shock affected her heart. She was prescribed Dr Biffin's heart tonic and took it for the rest of her life. She kept a photo of Harold with her until her death in 1975. She described him in letters as her only real man chum and only real friend. She had three of Harold's paintings, two she kept, one of daffodils and one called paperbark trees, and one she gave to Bob Southern, who would have been her greatest friend's nephew, had Captain Harold survived. Captain Harold Southern not being killed at Pope's Hill, Gallipoli, 1915. Her references to him implied a great lost love. She lay flowers every Anzac day at Anzac Hill in Alice Springs. 
Upon her death in 1975, a newspaper reported, a portrait of Captain Southern hung above her bed. Packed away in an old box was a faded wedding dress. In 1914, Olive had moved to Sydney and qualified for a town planning diploma. She gained a position with the New South Wales Department of Public Works as a tracer. The crops on Eldon's farm had failed. Money again was tight, so Olive and her mother moved to Sydney permanently and settled in Greenwich on the Lower North Shore. She taught briefly in a private girls' school where the students loved her, but the headmistresses struggled with her independent spirit. In 1915, New South Wales Government Railways and Tramways employed her to paint excursion posters until she was retrenched due to the Depression. During this time, she also attended classes at Julian Ashton's Sydney Art School. Olive joined the Red Cross and helped nurse wounded returned soldiers. In 1926-27, Olive had her first experience of Aboriginal culture after visiting Daisy Bates, anthropologist and welfare worker, at her camp in Aldea, South Australia, where she sketched wildflowers. This sparked her interest in Aboriginal welfare. It is these experiences that shaped her life. In 1930, she embarked on a sketching tour of Central Australia and further investigation of how Aboriginal people lived. Encouraged by Professor R. W. Firth in 1932, Olive studied anthropology at the University of Sydney. Olive's brother had married in 1917 and had three daughters, who became orphaned in 1935 when Eldon and his wife Rose drowned while fishing in their new yacht at Coogee, Western Australia. The girls went to live with relatives, but Olive kept in touch with them, writing and sending gifts. From the period 1933 to 1936, with the support of A.P. Elkin, she received grants from ANRC to visit Northern Territory and carry out research into the Arente and Walpiri people. Olive was up against the competitiveness of her male colleagues and there was friction between them. She was so concerned about her male being intercept intercepted and read that she tied it well with string and sealed it with purple wax seals. In December 1934 she became severely ill from contaminated water and had to be carried close to death for 20 miles to Doreen Station, where Doreen Brakeling nursed her for five days. She then spent 16 days recovering in Alice Springs at a hostel. She also met Albert Namajira at this time and purchased two of his paintings. Olive moved back to Tasmania in March 1937, first to a flat in Liverpool Street belonging to A.P. Miller, a friend of hers, she became actively involved in various societies and shared her knowledge of Aboriginal culture. She joined the Royal Society of Tasmania and also became assistant ethno ethnographer at the Tasmanian Museum, advising on collections and displays. In November, she moved to an idyllic setting in Bracken Lane, Ferntree, on Mount Wellington, where she wrote up her research. She sketched local plants such as a variety of Tasmanian mountain berries, leatherwood flowers and Tasmanian waratah. She enjoyed gardening at most of the places she called home. After a year she headed back to Sydney with money from a Quaker benefactor. She bought a 1924 Chevrolet Capital which had been cut down from its original tourer form to become a much more useful buckboard. She took driving lessons, but hired an Aboriginal driver for the bulk of the driving. Olive returned to Alice Springs where she attempted to set up a secular sanctuary for the Walpiri people, from which police, government and missions would be excluded. She settled at Thompson's Rock Hole where she camped for four years and continued her research. Increasing drought and the breakdown of her car ended this venture. Olive was badly beaten by two young Walpiri men when she refused their demands for food. 
Her decision to lock away her research notes for 50 years brought her anthropological career to an end. In 1946, Olive moved back to Alice Springs, where she survived by selling fruit and flowers, cleaning the courthouse, where she monitored Aboriginal court cases, and exhibiting her wildflower paintings for a small admission fee. Her inheritance had been spent on supporting her research. She lived in a corrugated iron hut on Gregory Terrace. From 1956 to 1958, Olive lived in a tent outside Alice Springs and lobbied to have a small area of land turned into an arid flora reserve. This was granted in 1956 and she was made honorary curator. 1958 to 1975, Olive Pink lived and worked on the flora reserve now known as the Olive Pink Botanic Garden until her death on the 6th of July 1975 in Alice Springs Hospital.